All right, let's get into the Planet Eclipse Etha. I tell you, there's always more buzz about four to five hundred dollar guns than there is about twelve to fifteen hundred dollar guns. I don't know why. It just it, email blows up. Review it. Review it. Review it. But um, got a glimpse of this at World Cup, and they started hitting the market right around December. Everybody's got one right now. They're retailing for about four hundred bucks. And packaging on this thing is top notch. It's got a nice hard case package, uh, protects everything. It's even got a little bit of extra room, which is really nice. Uh, here in the top part where the manual is, full color manual, but you definitely have room for, uh, you know, you've got room for anything extra that you might want to put in here, you know, little doodads and stuff like that, extra barrel socks. I uh, wish it was big enough to maybe fit a swab. I'm not sure if you could fit a swab in there or not. Yeah, you probably could if you put it across that way. But really nice manual. Got the Planet Eclipse toolkit. Ball socket toolkit, which is really nice. And Planet Eclipse grease. And a huge parts kit. This is a huge, <laughs> this is a huge parts kit. It's You probably have enough in here to keep your gun going at least for several years if you were using it every single weekend and maintaining it. You've got extra springs, detents, tons and tons and tons of O-rings, lots of stuff, uh, extra screws, so a great parts kit there. And that's gonna be appreciated by anyone that might have any problems with their marker later on down the road. Let's go ahead and set the box aside. Now, one thing that I did notice with the with the Etha is Planet Eclipse decided to go with the 693 bore. And when I asked the folks at Planet Eclipse why did you decide to go with that big of a bore, they said because of the price point of this marker, there are a lot of people that are going to be shooting this aren't going to be shooting, you know, perfect paint. It's going to be oblong, it's going to be field paint, it's going to be white box, you know, paint that might be slightly cooked, you know, sitting out in the summer, you know, sold out of a storage shed type deal. So they decided to go with an overbore a bigger bore barrel to reduce the barrel breaks um, possibly at the sacrifice of a little bit of efficiency so uh, when we get into the efficiency test you'll be able to uh, decide for yourself but they also said that they're going to be making if it hasn't already hit the market I believe it has it's a shaft for but they're going to be making a barrel kit specifically for the Etha so it's going to have the 89 and probably the 85 barrel backs if you wanted to replace your 690, you know, the 693 barrel back. The only upgrade that I felt I needed to do to this gun, I didn't do anything to this thing, is I just put the sprocket on here that uh, for the feed neck. That's the only upgrade I think this gun needs. So it shoots really well out of the box. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and, and jump right into our efficiency test. But you'll see it's got a really bright. LED on the back of this, it's, you know, there's no doubt whether this thing is on or off, but uh, let's go ahead and get into the efficiency test really quick. I'm going to get this ready to take it apart, which isn't going to take very long, and uh, we'll come back for the okay, conclusion. Guys, Mike, and we're going to do the efficiency test on the Planet Eclipse Etha, and let's go ahead and turn this on here. This is the new uh, Tech T gauge, which we're going to be using, and as you can see, we are sitting at about 4,249 PSI. <laughs> so, and let's go ahead and take a measurement, tank measurement here. We're at about 92 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and start shooting it over the chrono. Or 270, so we're a little low. <laughs> okay, 292, and uh, we'll start shooting.
that is And we shot that down to a hundred, hold on, about, uh, oops, so that is bar, MPA, PSI, it's America, damn it, alright, 151 PSI, so that's how far we shot it down. So we got about uh, seven, it's a little over seven and a half. All right, let's go ahead and weigh it. And we'll go ahead and turn it on. And like I said, the only thing is you've got that sprocket there, which I don't think that's going to make that big of a difference in the weight. But So it looks like we're sitting at two pounds, one ounce. Ooh, pretty lightweight gun. Two pounds, one ounce. And let's go ahead and take it apart. something I want to show you is at first glance it appears that the grips are all plastic that's not the case okay these grips are not 100% plastic there there is the plastic that's at the bottom but these ribs that you see here these are rubber so everything that you see that's raised up is rubber so when you when you've got it in your hand you've got a feeling of rubber in your hand this is not you know like a slippery plastic or by any stretch of the imagination I mean it's a plastic base but all of the raised ribs that you see here these are all rubber so when you've got you know when you've got it in your hand even if your hands are soaked you're going to be able to grip this marker just fine let's go ahead and take the bolt apart now here's the trick with the bolt if you use a tool to tighten it you're going to need a tool to uh, to take it out if you put it in finger tight then you should be able to use your fingers to get it out but you know that you don't have to torque this bolt down it's not going to move if you put it in there finger snug and i know also there's a big discussion on the internet about is this is this going to pop it is this going to spool um you know I, I don't know if they've quite figured it out yet you can see you know how this works this uh, you know how this bolt kind of holds in place right there but you know I, I don't know if they've quite gotten to the conclusion whether or not this is a poppet or a spool in my opinion it doesn't really quite matter it's kind of a little bit of both you've got a spool in that it's it slides forward and opens up a dump valve but then you've also got a poppet in the the back piece here that shuttles back and forth on a spring so I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a poppet or a spool. I'm not exactly sure, but I know it shoots really good. That's about as much as I can tell you. <laughs> Didn't break any paint with it when we had it. And this gonna actually lent out to a lot of people that haven't really played a lot of paintball. And they had no problem operating it at all. There's no crazy sequence to turn it on or anything like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and lube this up a little bit. This gun has been used. There we go. Just kind of clean this out here. You shouldn't really get a lot of paint, you know, really, or a lot of uh, lube inside this thing, but you can use a swab to clean it up. That's pretty simple. There's not much to taking this gun apart at all. So let's go ahead and put it back together again. There we go. And that's it for maintaining the bolt. Very simple. Now the regulator, it's the same exact regulator. Uh, it's the same exact regulator that you find on the Geo 2.1, on the Ego 11. The, I mean, this is, this is the Planet Eclipse regulator that you get on here. This is not a, you know, a cheap regulator that they made just for the Etho. It's got all the same parts as the SLS it's it's the exact same regulator which is great because it's a very good regulator but as you can tell as you can see here you know complete almost complete toolless disassembly here we go 
sorry about shaking around the camera there, but we're taking this apart. So, you know, very simple disassembly. I mean, you can take this gun completely apart. Uh, you can take the Etho apart completely without using any tools at all. I'm going to do here is just kind of get a little bit of lube here and clean it up. You can use whatever, you know, use, use whatever lube you want. This is, you know, it's got the Planet Eclipse lube in the box. Use that. You don't want to use that you can use whatever whatever you like I think the most important thing is that you just keep the gun clean you know what's the best lube to use on the ether I'd probably say just use what they gave you but, so I'll put this back together again This is not anything that you would really ever have to do at the field, but you know, maybe if you had a broken ball in the bag, you might have to take apart the take the bolt out when you're at the field to clean down where the detents are. But it's the same detents that they've been using on all the Planet Eclipse guns for, for probably the past decade, I guess, but or maybe about at least the past seven, eight years. Now the trigger, even though it is, even though the trigger is composite or plastic, it's still got the same shape and pretty much the same design as the Geo 2.1 and the, and also the Eagle 11. I mean, this is a great feeling trigger. It's very, very fast. And it's, you know, that, that is a very, very good trigger, especially for $400. I mean, especially you go and you compare it to like the, the dangerous power guns or compare it to, you know, most of the guns that are $400 and under, you're going to find that the Etha trigger is by far probably one of the best triggers that are on the market for a gun, that, you know, gun in this price range. It's, that, that's really nice. They didn't put anything cheap in there or, or shortcut it, even though the, the price was low. You got a pretty decent ASA. Uh, you've seen this ASA on quite a few different guns. I think MacDev uses pretty close to the same ASA. Nothing really too crazy about that. I will show you something pretty cool too. Let's go ahead and pop this panel off here. Now the panels only use one screw. I'll show you how they get away with that. It's just one screw to, uh, for the panels. This is something that's just really cool. I mean, this is, you can definitely tell, you know, Planet Eclipse is going above and beyond here on this, on this Etha. I mean, you take a look, you pull the grip off. And remember many years ago, one of the first shows I did was called the Mini Manual, where, um, you know, you go into Notepad and you, you print up, you know, a shortcut of what your LED colors are. And uh, you put some packing tape over the top of it. And then you cut it out and put it inside your grip. And I mean, this is something that, you know, that, that Virtue gives you to put inside there, you know, $100, $130, $140 boards. They give you this little color coordinating chart right here. And even though it maybe sounds silly, just the fact that it's a little sticker, the fact that you can look on here and say, oh, okay, red is my firing mode. Green is my max rate of fire. Purple is dwell. Blue is max rate of fire. And light blue is my debounce. The fact that it's all right here, this could save somebody's tail if they're at the field one day. You know, if you're in your backyard goofing off and you're shooting uncapped ramping and you forget to change your mode back, you get on the field and all of a sudden it's like you know anybody have an ether manual no no <laughs> you know you just pop off your grip and there it is but yeah uh, to get back to my point there's the tab there's a tab right there let's see if you can see that there you go there's a tab right here and that tab goes in place right here so you kind of put the tab in first put the grip panel down and that's how it's held in place by only one screw this is great because you don't have to worry about uh, you know, so let's think of some of the guns in the past, like the Shocker, where you got a top screw that may go into your solenoid upper board, or uh, even some of the original 07 and 08 egos, where if you put the screw in too far, you bumped your solenoid, and now your solenoid would leak and stuff like that. I mean, just one screw down at the bottom. That's it. It, 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 it definitely coming along really well. Anybody that's ever ruined a top board on a Shocker because you put in the uh, I put in the screw too far. You definitely would definitely can uh, appreciate that the fact that they only have one screw now, and it's impossible to mess that up. So let's let's try to think what else we've got to do here. Uh, I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and set the camera back up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the conclusion on it. This gun shoots really good, and for 400 bucks, 
it is definitely a steal. You get, you know, all of the care that goes into the packaging of Planet Eclipse. You know, you get the nice color manual, big rebuild kit, lube, top quality tools, top quality case, great clamping feed neck. You know, you can do this with a, a toolless disassembly. You get the on off ASA, adjustable on off ASA on the T rail. You can slide it back, slide it forward, depending on your tank. Nice, bright LED, easy push button. You know, they, they also did really nice with the, the designing of the on off button in the back. It's not going to be like, you know, so, you know, remember some of the original die ultralights where you had the, the whole uh, rubber thing coming off. It's not going to happen on the back of this. It's very well designed. They did a great job designing this gun. Everything fits together really nice. It looks good and it feels great in your hands. About the only, probably the only complaint that I would have on it, and this is this is obviously nitpicking this thing to death because it is four hundred dollars, is that it's got a unique sound signature. It's got a little bit of a ting to it when you shoot it. I'm sure it's just it has nothing really to do with the the workings of the gun. It's just more the spring that they use to pull the bolt back. The, you know, when you do shoot it, you are going to feel a, a slight vibration through the gun when you start shooting it, and it just has to do with the resonance of the spring. Not much you can really do about that. I'm not sure if, you know, I'm not sure if it's just something that they can, you know, maybe, they, maybe they'll maybe come up with an aha moment later on down in the future, but that's about the only complaint I have for it. Did it affect the shooting of it? Absolutely not. Did it affect the accuracy? Absolutely not. Did it affect efficiency, break balls? No, didn't do any of that. It's just one of those things that when you're out there and you're shooting it, if you just, you know, if you go and you one ball, you're going to feel a vibration of the spring resetting when the bolt comes back. That's it. The, I landed, the, I landed this gun out to two or three of my friends that have haven't or rarely play paintball they had no problems with it um, i set it at 10 bps ramping for them i put it at 12 and a half for me when i was out there on the field very easy to change the modes very simple it's a lot easier to program than even the e-tech boards and with the exception about the only upgrade i would say to get for it would be this little sprocket which you can pick up i think most people now are carrying you can get it from planet clips directly pro star pb so that should wrap it up for the etha i mean 400 bucks it's all here <laughs> it, it, the, it really is all here so you know, I think Planet Eclipse did a great job with this. It's it's a great shooting gun. I really can't wait for them to come out with the attachments that are supposed to snap over the top here. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to, hopefully if they do it, one that will snap over the top here because it does have grooves on both sides uh, for some sort of attachment to clip over the top. But uh, if they come out with that attachment that allows you to put the cameras on both sides, I think it's just going to be awesome. I really can't wait to do that So uh, until they come out with that. But that's about it. Planet Eclipse Etha, 400 bucks. Great shooting gun, no complaints here, other than the uh, the slight tinge from the uh, the reverberation from the spring, but no broken paint, you know, pretty decently efficient, feels great in the hands, can't beat it. All right, thank you.